Indeed, Allah guides those whom He wills and those whom He is pleased with. And we as Muslims believe that each and every human being who is sincere and who is curious and who wants to learn the truth, we believe that that person will eventually be guided to the truth. In other words, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because God is so loving and caring, because Allah is so just and merciful, any human being who wants to receive guidance will receive it. Any human being who wants to accept the truth will find the truth. The peace that you are going to feel in your heart, the tranquility that you are going to experience, that you have never ever experienced, you actually directly connect yourself to Him, the peace you will experience, let me tell you, all the price you're going to pay is worth it. And as I said that to her, she started tearing. She just started crying. And I asked her, you know, I, you know why you're crying? And she says, no, I don't know why I'm crying. And I said, because you're saying you're not sure about Islam, but you've actually already accepted it. Islam is actually accepted in a person's heart. And when the heart accepts Islam, the tears come out. It just, they just come out. You can't even help it. She starts crying even more. And I said, you know, when you cry, you remind me of something Allah said in the Quran. And I recited this ayah to her. When the time came that they heard what was revealed to the messenger, you're going to see their eyes overflow with tears as a result of what they recognize out of the truth. In other words, they hear the revelation, they recognize it to be true, and they just can't even help themselves. They say, Master, we've come to accept. We have believed. Please write us in, record us among those who bear witness. In other words, among those who bear witness to the truth. She starts crying even more and then she says, how do I take shahada? So how does one go about accepting Islam? The response is that we are not a superstitious religion. There is no ceremonial acceptance. The actual acceptance of Islam is an act between you and the one who created you. It's an act that is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now of course, if you were to publicize this in a mosque, in a gathering, that's very good. But it is not a necessary condition. It is not something that is essentially required. Rather, it is just a simple act of common sense that when you have embraced a faith, you wish to join that community, you wish to announce your, your Islam in that community. But the actual act of conversion is simply the utterance of the testimony of faith. The testimony of faith is Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah which translates as I testify. I am fully convinced. I have no doubt. I am absolutely certain that there is no deity that is worthy of my veneration and worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I testify, I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. This is the testimony by which you accept Islam. If you want to perfect this testimony, if you want to do the best things possible, you should purify yourself, take a bath, you know, do, wear good clothes, go to the mosque, go to your local community of Muslims, tell them you want to embrace Islam, and, and do a public testimony of faith. But all of these are embellishments that are nice to have, but they are not requirements. You may embrace Islam in the privacy of your home. You may do it in a, 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 in a room where nobody else can hear you except for the one who created you. Now, after you have uh, accepted the testimony of faith, you should try to find your local mosque, your local community, so that you are aware of the events going on. Try to uh, uh, attend various gatherings. You need to start praying regularly, the five times prayer. You need to fast the month of Ramadan. You need to pay the charity to the poor. All of these pillars of Islam, you are very well aware because you have researched Islam. But the point is that with that conviction, with that testimony, the entire religion of Islam becomes obligatory upon you to act upon. Therefore, make sure that you are ready and prepared to accept this religion. Make sure you are intellectually, yes, I know this is the truth and I want to go ahead and accept it. If you are still unsure, if you're still doubtful, research, ask around, pray, pray to the God who created you. Don't even give him a name. Say, oh you who created me, guide me to the truth. And if you are sincere, then we as Muslims believe that you will indeed be guided to the truth. Now a brief explanation of what this testimony is. The first part of the testimony is the conviction that there is no deity that is worthy of worship except for the one who created you. 
The one who created you is the one who is all knowledgeable, all powerful. He hears you wherever you are. No being loves you as much as the one who created you, not even your mother and father. No being cares about you. No being has the power to help you, benefit you, to prevent harm from you other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you know these facts, how then can you turn to others in worship? We do not turn to any other being, even the prophets of God, even the angels, even the saints. We believe in saints, we believe in holy men. We call them holy people, we believe in them. And only God knows who they are, but they are there. But even if they're holy, that doesn't mean they're gods. Even if they're pious, doesn't mean that they control the creation. So we don't turn to them, we turn to the one whom they turn to. If they're truly holy and pious, then they also turn to God. Therefore, if they turn to God, they become an example for us, we too turn to God. So the first part of the testimony is that I bear witness and I testify that there is no deity worthy of my worship other than Allah. All of my love and hope, all of my fear, all of my expect expectations will be singled out to this one God. And the second part of the testimony, Muhammadur Rasulullah, means that I bear witness and testify that this particular human being, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I testify that this human being was sent by God to be an example for me. Not to be taken as worship, not to be ascribed divinity, but to become a role model for us. He is a human like we are. He was born a normal birth. He ate and drank like we eat and drink. He married, he had children, and then eventually he passed away. He was not a God, but he was the messenger of God. He came to teach us the message. He came to show us the way. He came to set an example. And that example is a human example that we have to emulate, we have to copy, we have to take as our role model. So by saying, I bear witness and testify that Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah, what you're saying is that no human being is a better example for me. No human being is a better role model for me as a father, as a leader as a spiritual advisor, as a worshipper of God, as a husband, as a role model citizen, no human being is a better example than this human being. That is what you're saying. You are not making him into a God, you are making him into the best worshipper of God, the best servant of God. And so what this testimony symbolizes is that you need to study the messenger. You need to study his life and times. You need to study his actions and teachings. And when you study them, you then put them into practice in your daily life. These are the two fundamental testimonies of faith. Only God is to be worshipped, only Allah is to be worshipped, and He is worshipped based upon the methodology and the customs of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides you and me and all of us to the truth. I pray that He forgives us in this world and the next, and I pray that He showers us with His blessings and His mercy in this world and the one to come. Person wants to know they want to become a Muslim, but they're afraid of you know falling back and forth into and out of sin and not doing what they're supposed to do. They don't think they're good enough yet to be a Muslim. How many of you in this room every single day fall in and out of sin? How many of you are going to do it every day, probably of the rest of your life? How many of you are Muslim? It's just the nature of the human being. We're never going to be perfect. That's one thing that, that a lot of religions have misunderstood is that God doesn't want perfection. He created you perfect, but that free will, the moment you became old enough to choose right and wrong, God already knew you were going to make wrong choices. That's all part of the process. God knew that you were going to make mistakes and He created you with that ability so that some of you would come back to Him and He would forgive you. So you will never be good enough to be a Muslim. None of us will ever be good enough for the guidance that has been given to us. It's a gift that is not repayable. We just try every single day and we beg every single day, guide me to the straight path, guide me to the straight path. That's how we make it every day. So if you're ready to become a Muslim, do it now. Because those things that you slipped on before, there's one thing I know about Islam. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Islam erases everything that came before. I wish I would have accepted Islam yesterday. <laughs> But Islam erases everything that came before it. So if you want to get rid of all of that today, today is the day to get rid of your burden and enter into a new life of Islam and start fixing your relationship with the one who created you. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Fix that relationship today. Take it easy. Step by step. 
Don't rush, don't be pushed, don't take more on yourself than you can handle. Understand that there are rules. There's do's, there's don'ts, there's laws, there's what's lawful, there's what's unlawful, but you can't do it all in a day. Do as much as you can and be sincere. This is the main thing. Just be sincere and about your family and about your friends, about your colleagues, about uh, relatives. Keep this in mind. You're not obligated to them and you're not connected to them on the day of judgment. This, ju this, this decision you made is a decision that you made in front of God for yourselves. Gradually, you will get the strength, you will get the confidence, you'll get the clarity and you'll have the answers for your friends and for your relatives. Until you do, hold it for yourself. So you start off today with a clean slate and do your best. If there's any men in your lives, boyfriends or whatever the case might be, you need to make that relationship correct. Because the relationships in Islam should be relationships of responsibility. But again, this is something you'll correct as soon as you're able to do so. And it's not going to be easy and and your parents are probably going to really not take this well. Your friends are probably going to be pretty shocked. You're also probably going to feel very, very isolated. And life is going to change. And these are all legitimate, legitimate concerns. But that, that moment when you take the Shahada, for those of you that have, you know the kind of peace you felt. You can't even describe it to anybody else. That joy is something like a secret between you and Allah. But from that point on, challenges come. But whether they come from family, or they come from friends, or they come from the job, or they come from your social circle, they will come. They might be you know, emotional in nature, they might even be financial in nature. There might be some serious, serious challenges that come your way. But that is Allah's way of testing whether or not this statement, this declaration you made is worth it to you. What are you willing to pay for it? What are you willing to suffer to hold on to this? Because he wants to know the value of those words to you. These aren't just words you say and get a walk away. You, these are words you say and you prove their worth to Allah. And then when you can go through a little bit of that test, you will see Allah open the doors of tranquility and ease and peace in your heart like you never, ever, ever imagined before. In Surah Al-Ankabut, the 29th Surah, Allah says, did people assume that they're going to just accept the faith and they're not going to be put to serious test? Did they assume they're not going to be tested? And these tough times are going to refine you and purify you and make you a, a better believer than you ever imagined. So this is part of the journey to Allah. Accept it, embrace it, and you know, feel happy about it. And as you go in this journey and feel kind of lost and alone, just understand those who've accepted the faith and did good deeds thereafter, then Allah says about them, we will enter them, absolutely this is my promise, and we will certainly enter them into the company of the righteous. In other words, you're gonna lose some friends, you're gonna lose some relationships, some things will not be the same as they used to be before, but Allah will replace them with new relationships, with new bonds of love, with new bonds of brotherhood and sisterhood that you could not have imagined, and the sincerity and the love you will feel will more than compensate for the losses you felt at one point. Allah will soften your heart and others' hearts towards you just because of the beauty of this faith. Unfortunately, until now, my mother is not yet a Muslim. Inshallah, Allah will guide her. Inshallah, it's always my thoughts, Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> How can I show respect and love to my mother, even though she's not a Muslim? You keep praying for them, and you keep asking Allah to guide them. Because even if they're not Muslim, they still have the rights on you. And the proof is not from me. The proof is in this book, in Surah Luqman, chapter 31, verse 12. I kind of make you think about Zachar Knight, right? Anyway, <laughs> Allah is telling us about Luqman. And Luqman is somebody talking to his son, and he says, Oh, my son. You have to worship Allah alone without any partners. This is the first rule in Islam. Always that. And obey your parents in everything except if they want you to worship other than Allah. Your job and my job is to live the message. Live the message. And let people observe and understand from our action. Be like a farmer. Plant your seeds in the day and then water them at night. 
the seeds are the seeds of the dawah, of la ilaha illallah. And then in the night you get up and you cry. So it's dawah in the day and dua in the night. And maybe, but before they die, maybe Allah will guide them. I pray for them and I sincerely ask Allah to guide them. Amin. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Since we're here on YouTube, I want to invite you to record your shahada and upload it here as a response video. And inshallah, you'll get a nice warm welcome from the YouTube Muslim community. This invitation goes out to anyone watching this video. And inshallah, having everyone participate may give our non-Muslim brothers and sisters the courage to take the shahada as well. Okay, ready? Repeat after me. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad peace and blessings of Allah be upon him is his slave and his messenger okay now in Arabic Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu Anna Muhammadan Abduhu Wa Rasulu MashaAllah, if you just took your shahada, you are now an official Muslim. All of your past sins, not only are they forgiven, but they are converted into good deeds. You are as free of sin as a newborn child. Because you're in such a pure state right now, this is the best time to make a lot of dua, personal prayer. You can ask Allah to help you along this new path, to continue to guide you and to guide your family. Also, if you could, please pray for me and for my family.